Urban Meyer, Jaguars coach, game two of 20. He's very aware that it's not college anymore. You got 20 games to play. Trevor Lawrence in his second opportunity to show what he can do. An uneven performance, 14 for 23, 113 yards, a sack, one rush for nine yards, and an ill-advised effort to oh. do an Elway copter at the end oh. that almost could have could have ended that quarterback competition suddenly and decisively depending upon which way he went down and how he got hit look I, I Ooh, that was scary I, I literally yelled my little son was next to me too and he's the same thing like we, we thought he lo- I thought he lost his right knee in real time here I really did I mean he just got his knee out of the ground as this guy's seeking in there, I thought he was going to sit there and lay there for a second. I'm just, I'm glad he got it out and is safe. But you, you said it on our text. Like, don't you do can't this. do it. Right. You can't do it. Ooh. This is not, this is not a badge of honor. It is a dunce cap, right? Yes. In a preseason game, you're putting yourself in that kind of risk with supposedly a quarterback competition and they're evaluating everything, including whether or not you do dumb stuff. And yeah. I almost said a word other than stuff. Yeah. That was a dumb play. It's a game that doesn't count. You're trying to learn the parameters. And, and that's the only good thing about it, because he probably learned a lesson. That's no doubt that about it. Now we'll, You're right. we'll see what happens next time. We'll see what happens next time he has a chance to run. Does he get down? Does he get out of bounds? Or does he put himself in that ridiculous jeopardy, unnecessary danger? Here he is after the game talking about his decision to go in head first and not slide. Slide in the future? Or is that <laughs> yeah, I mean, it was third down. That's the only reason I did it. I thought about it right there. There was a little pocket to slide, but, you know, they mark you back if, from where you start your slide, so I wouldn't have got the first down there. So third and fourth down, you got to go get it. But other than that, yeah, I'll appreciate you looking out. I'll try to get down. <laughs> yeah, I'd like to uh, see that. Uh, I, didn't, I didn't have a chance to talk to him yet. I will, but... Uh, I know what kind of competitor he is, and he was going to get that first down. So, obviously, you'd like to have him see him get down. Yeah, that's what you have to balance. You're a competitor. But this is currently a competition that means nothing, except for the quarterback competition. But, again, this, I, I just he's young. He's learning the game. That's right. He's learning the speed of the game. Right. He's learning the violence of the game. He's learning. This gets back to what we talked about with Jameis Winston. You have to know where – your physical abilities end, and hubris that gets you in trouble either with turnovers or injury begins. Yeah. Where's that line? Right. Figure out where that line is, and I'm going to stay on the other side of it. So the only good thing that came out of that play last night, obviously he wasn't injured, but secondly, he knows how far the rubber band can stretch. Yeah. And next time, you slide. Next time you get down, next time, especially in a preseason game, you tell yourself, yeah, it is third down. It doesn't matter. It's a preseason game. Yeah, no, no you're, you're exactly right. You're hitting all the right points. You know, he, it, I, you know, again, I know we came from Clemson and he was, you know, the god of college football for three years. But damn, this is the NFL and that's the New Orleans Saints. And I don't care who you are. There is a learning curve when you first get in the NFL. The speed of the game, the size of the guys, the ferociousness of the game overall, it doesn't compare to any college game you've ever played. And they in the NFL, I mean, they can't wait to hit the quarterback when he's out in a, in a, in a scenario like that. So I'm not – you know, I, I understand. You're not especially gonna, the Saints. Yes, especially the Saints, who you know love to hit and tackle to be one of the most physical teams in football. Yeah, he's got to learn how to handle that situation, be able to diagnose it before he gets in there to go, wait, I can't get in there because I'm going to get in a bad position and I might get in trouble or get hurt or whatever. So he's just got to figure out, too, if he does want to go for the first down, the positions he puts his body in that are going to be safer than having both feet planted in the ground almost at a dead stop with four people around you. That is a no. You know, maybe you go in there and you kind of do the side fall dive, right? Something like that. There's other ways to protect your body and still get that first down, but just don't do that. And I'm uh, that's your move. That, that's your don't hit me, don't hit me, don't hit me move. Don't hit me, don't you're, hit you're me. You're gonna hit into me. The end and zone. I'll roll to the first you're, down. Right? Yeah. Right. You, you, the, the 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 duck and cover into the end zone. That's we right. have that somewhere. Let's see. It's if the like that. It's like that Joe Frazier. You got to take the blow a little bit and roll with it a little. <laughs> Wasn't that your touchdown run when yes. you threw the ball yes. into the ship? I did yeah. that. And my ball into the ship, and then uh, I. I did it again the next year with the, my game where my spleen is bleeding out and I, I have a quarterback run to the left pylon 
and I'm sitting there going, oh, man, I'm hurting so much. Please don't hit me. And I did the same kind of thing. Uh, I was in a little pain, but it, it is a good way to kind of shield yourself and most importantly, get your legs out of the ground so you don't lose an ACL or something like that where we've seen quarterbacks get you know compromised before. And people understand it now. There was a time when it was viewed as some sort of strange cowardice if a right. quarterback you know, hit the deck, whether behind the line of scrimmage, if nothing is there. I mean, Peyton Manning turned that into that's, an art form. That's right. It's He did it. It's it's smart. It's smart. Right. You keep yourself healthy. Oh, you, hey, what a great play. What grit. Oh, he can't walk now. <laughs> yeah, oh, he's out yeah. for 10 weeks. Oh, but that was a great play. Right. Yeah, no, you're exact. I think Peyton is the one that made it a real thing for quarterbacks to go like, he's not a coward. He's as tough as they come. You know, and then we all we saw really what it was is we saw how awesome he was and how important he was to the Colts where we're like, OK, who cares? It's third and ten. And he just fell down in the middle of the pocket. We need to hit him out there to play to come back and win this game or whatever. And I do. I think he was a big reason why everybody could finally digest the quarterback going down, protecting himself. He's not a football player. All that crap. Yeah, no, he's not. He's the damn quarterback and he makes 30 million dollars a year and your team's riding on it. So he's got to keep himself healthy. But, but you're right, though. You're right. There is a fundamental difference between one of the all-time greats taking a seat to live to play another yes. day and a lesser quarterback. And I could name some lesser quarterbacks. Yeah. I won't. <laughs> Pretty much all of them. It's easier to name the quarterbacks who are as good or better than Peyton Manning than the lesser ones because we'd be here all day if we were doing that. Uh, what about Trevor Lawrence's performance as a quarterback, as a passer? We've established that he – was not the smartest when it was time to dive. What what about his play when he was distributing the football through the air? It's a tough eval as far as the game itself, right? Like, I physically like the way Trevor Lawrence looks. I mean, again, we saw him move in the pocket, run for the first down there. The athleticism's real. For a guy to be 6'6 and be able to, you know, spin out backwards and do some of those things and all that – you know, that's rare to be have that size. Here, this throw on the run to the left with somebody in your face. I mean, that was a 19-yard laser. Awkward. Awkward throw. Bam. On the money. You know, the, so the, you see the physical ability. You know, this one, yeah, didn't give the guy a chance. But also, I would say, you know, within this and a lot of the bad plays or whatever else, like, you know, what, what was he supposed to do? They were overmatched. There was no doubt about that. They are not in the same class as the New Orleans Saints in any way. You got a first time. There's a great play. That's what we need to see more. Stepping up in the pocket. You know, that was great. Uh, here again on the run again. You know, not, I mean, that's dangerous there to me making that throw with the corner in front of him. Now you got him back in the pocket here. I'm just going to go through. This is like, this is the stuff I look at and go, man, I mean, the way he moves is smooth. Now that was a stupid decision again. Right, but I think he. But getting... to roll out and reset, right? The pocket wasn't there. He turned. He yes. spun. He found a clean spot, but then he made a bad throw. Right, made a bad. He'll get, and that's like you know talking about the sliding and everything. He'll learn to what's open, what I can get away with, and all those type of things. So you see the ability for sure, but it's going to be an uphill climb. He's probably in the toughest position out of all the rookie quarterbacks, and. You know, for everybody praising and saying he's the greatest prospect of Andrew Luck and all those type of things, like, listen, he's a great prospect. He wasn't as NFL ready as everybody thinks. That offense he was in college was easy. It was a college offense. So it's a learning process for him right now. And I thought the guys on the telecast, even Booger McFarlane at halftime, did a good job of going like, you know, what, what are the Ravens? I mean, the Jaguars. You know, they don't do a whole lot to help them out right now. And when you got a new head coach, a bunch of new players, a rookie quarterback, everybody trying to figure out their way, things aren't going to be smooth. And I think that's why they're a little reluctant to just say he's the starter and throw him out there because they don't want Joe Burrow to happen. That's why. I, that's the sense I got last night. They don't want him to get out there. The team be less than. They ask too much of him, and then he loses an ACL, and Urban Meyer's NFL career goes down the drain with it because he doesn't have his star quarterback for a year. You Sorry know what? So I think you're right. Okay. I think, But you know what? I think yeah. you're right. And, and the, the comment was made during the broadcast is attributed to, a, I believe, Daryl Bevel, the offensive coordinator, that they're looking for their offensive identity. But there, there was a comment from Urban Meyer at some point where when I read it, I had the same thought you had. This isn't about 
whether or not Trevor Lawrence is a better quarterback than Gardner Minshew. No. This is about whether the talent around him or lack thereof yes. is such that we're not comfortable putting the number one overall pick right. on the field. Right. And we're trying to paint it as glass half full, not glass 90% empty. Yeah. And this is exactly, I, I think Shereen and I talked about this on Friday because Jalen Hurts all of a sudden couldn't play. Joe Flacco gets thrust into the lineup. Joe Flacco was not supp supposed to play as a rookie in Baltimore. They were concerned that their right. offensive line wasn't good enough and he wasn't going to be able to protect himself. Troy Smith got tonsillitis in the preseason and they got comfortable with the idea that Flacco could go out there and perform effectively without getting himself killed. And I, I th and you know maybe that's to take it back to our first point with Trevor Lawrence almost getting himself killed. Maybe that's what Urban that's Meyer is really of. thinking about here. Yeah. Why do we want in a year when it is clear? It's funny how quickly Pete Demolitis backtracked last night on his thought that Jacksonville could go three and one to start the year. Yeah. <laughs> he's, he's revised that to zero and four based upon the fact that they were one and fifteen last year for a reason. They're bereft of talent, right. and just because you have Trevor Lawrence and Travis Etienne, by the way, who's out indefinitely after suffering a foot injury last night, and he was in a boot after the game. Just because you have a big draft and you bring in Urban Meyer, you still got a bunch of guys on the team right. that 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 weren't good enough last year or you would have done more than win week one against the Colts. Yeah, that's exactly right, Mike. I mean, you got young guys that are a lot of young guys, first and second year players. You brought in a whole bunch of free agents, right? So it's a total rebuild, retool, whatever the hell you want to call it there in Jacksonville. And you've heard the, 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 the guys last night talk a few times, like Urban Meyer. I mean, he's – He's figuring out NFL life on the fly here. So he's not going to be perfect with this either. But the one thing he knows is he took the job because of number 16. And that was one of the big reasons he took it. And he's not going to screw that up and get him hurt. And now, oh, man, my NFL experience was a total failure because I couldn't check my ego at the door. And I had to let my quarterback play, 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 carry us, carry us, carry us. And I would worry about that, too. I think it's smart. Hey, Urban Meyer's old school, and I think the play that we talked about before with him hurting himself is the best. Is a great example. Like, if it's regular season week three, and they're zero and two, like, and yeah, they are not. Doesn't look like they're going to be able to run the ball worth a damn and all that. You know, they're going to ask him to throw the ball, and he's going to try to win the game, and he's going to play like his butt's on fire, and he's going to scramble and run into piles of people and do things like that. And that's when you get freaking hurt. And that's when you get in the Bengals situation, which is a horrible situation. So uh, I, I understand it. I think that's, you know, the, they made that kind of clear as the night went on, that it's about the team and can they support Trevor Lawrence? Uh, not so much like you said, Trevor Lawrence. He, he's better than Gardner Minshew. I, I know that. Well, and Gardner Minshew had a rough time last night as well. Right. Because he doesn't have the talent around Definitely. him. It's amazing. This guy's got... 37 career touchdown passes and 11 picks with a team that has been gradually and consistently and inevitably disintegrating since 2017. Yeah. On the run. Now, look, that, he, that. he could have made that. that yeah, he should have hit that one. But, but you know, the, the, the protection wasn't there. No. And, you know, some of the throws were good. Some of them were bad. It's not enough to win the job. This is, We are reconfiguring the analysis here. This isn't about Minshew beating out no. Lawrence. This is about Minshew being better suited to be thrown to the wolves exactly. than Lawrence. Knowing how to protect himself a little bit. He's played the game before. He knows all his outlets as far as an NFL quarterback's concern. Oh, what, like that right there. You know, right there, like, oh, man, somebody's on my back. I know there's a guy over here in the flat. I could throw the ball away or just give him the chance to get the ball. There again, too. You know, again, he got the ball out. It's a stupid throw and, and a bad throw and everything like that. But, you know, I think what they're probably worried about is, like, Trevor Lawrence gets in a few of those situations, and he dances around the pocket and moves and scrambles and does all these type of things. And then, yeah, it's, it's a roll of the dice. And uh, I understand Urban Meyer being very careful about this situation. I, I really do. And, and look, we assume that there's a broader strategy. There's a broader plan. Sometimes stuff just happens, especially when you've got a guy who's never coached at the NFL level and maybe they're a little bit overwhelmed. I mean, just for example, the fact that they used the franchise tag on Cam Robinson, the left tackle, and he may not even be the starting left tackle. They used the franchise tag because they really didn't know what they had. Exactly. Let's go see what we have. Right. Oh, wait, he may not even be the starter. But the, the, the notion of a competition between – 
Trevor Lawrence and Gardner Minshew, and, and nobody really believes that's a true competition. Right. It's maybe a showcasing of Minshew for trade, or maybe as we're now kind of stumbling over, uh, Minshew is the guy who's going to go out there behind a substandard offensive line and run for his life all year, not Trevor Lawrence. And at some level, Chris, too, you and I both thought of this. The comment that Trevor Lawrence made to Sports Illustrated before the draft that got some folks up in arms, the idea that he doesn't have a chip on his shoulder, everyone's out to get me, I'm trying to prove everybody wrong, I don't have that, I can't manufacture it, I don't want to. I think people mistake that for being a competitor. I think that's unhealthy to a certain extent. I just wonder whether or not this competition is aimed at kind of cracking that facade a little bit and getting him pissed off sure. and testing him. Right. You know, wait a minute. This is supposed to be my job. I'm going to go take this job. This is my job. I'm not going to take a back seat to Gardner Minshew, the sixth-round pick from Washington State. This is my job, and that's what maybe wakes up this reservoir of, of something, right. of badassery, to turn him into the guy that is going to lead the team. I, I Again, I, I'm attributing too much thought and strategy in a situation where it's just they're trying to not drown. But – but still, there are different ways to yeah, look at this no doubt. phony no doubt. and fake competition, and that's one way to look at it as well. Well, no doubt. Maybe, yeah, maybe it is just about, hey, let's push the young guy. Let's make him not let's, – let's not roll out the red carpet. You know, like you said, let's, let's make, give him a little edge here to where he's got to work every day. It's just not handed to him. I, I think there's, you know, an, an aspect to that. There's no doubt. You know, my second year in my career I could speak to, I had a chance to, you know – kind of battle Brad Johnson, who was two years out of the Super Bowl and things like that. And, you know, I thought I was out practicing him and doing stuff and better than him in training camp and even some of the preseason games. But, you know, they weren't going to just hand it to me, of course, because he had won the Super Bowl. He was more experienced than me. But also, I think Gruden wanted me to get close and, you know, just get over the edge and become that true edginess jerk that you're talking about. I want you here Tuesday morning, even though it's a day off, and I want you to be the first one in the building watching film and doing those things, you know? And I remember, like, Bill Muir, our offensive line coach and things like that, coming up to me, like, you got to do more. You got to do more. And I'd be like, man, I'm whooping butt in practice every day. Nobody's doing what I'm doing. But it was the other little things that they knew that were going to make me better as a pro in the regular season and things like that. And that certainly could be part of his, you know, Zen master, you know, uh, approach here from from Urban Meyer, Urban Meyer as well. Took a lot of work in Tampa to undo that laissez faire upbringing. <laughs> like that's the, yes, that's really what they. My were man Steve about. Young on there last night, man, man from the mean streets of Greenwich. But I, I know. every <laughs> time I see I him now, I, I think of that. I know every damn time. He feels time. so bad. I love Steve. He apologizes every time I see him. And uh, as I've told you before, I think he might have been led down that trap of words, uh, maybe before he said them on TV. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> Hi, I'm Mike Tirico, and thanks for watching. Make sure to hit subscribe for the latest news and highlights from NBC Sports.